In this module, we're not going to present so much more new information as much as trying to bring together and summarize a number of things that we've learned about vectors. In particular, I want to highlight that and, and uh, uh, link together the three different ways that we have to currently represent vectors. So let's take a specific example. Uh, let's say I'm a research biologist and here's my table and, and I'm studying the motion of uh, uh, this particular bug. And at this instant in bug, I, I want to note where the bug is uh, uh, moving. And so I can say represent the motion of this bug going in that direction at a speed of 8 millimeters per second. And so uh, if I wanted to try to quantify that in vector form, I might have a coordinate system centered on my, my bug, a plus x and a plus y. And uh, I can represent that this bug has a velocity vector at this instant in time of uh, 8 millimeters per second and it needs to be going in a direction, we'll say 25 degrees counterclockwise uh, from the positive y axis. And so this is one way that we've had so far to describe uh, vectors where we have sort of a magnitude and we describe the direction. We might call this the descriptive method um, of representing a vector. So there's the vector, and then we can uh, calculate the magnitude of this vector. The magnitude, which is written with absolute value symbols, or maybe just the symbol without the line. In this case, we can read it directly from the vector itself. The magnitude is 8 millimeters per second. This describes the amount or the size. Uh, it's important to note that the magnitude is always positive. The magnitude of a vector is always positive. Whether there's a minus sign relative to a coordinate system is telling you information about the direction that's contained in the direction part. So the magnitude, and that's another uh, hint given the absolute value signs, is that the magnitude is always a positive number. If we want to then identify the direction part, we can do that with a unit vector. The unit vector for this uh, vector in descriptive notation is going to be 1 without any units and then the direction 25 degrees counterclockwise from the positive y axis. And then as we know the, the vector is equal to the magnitude which is a positive scalar times the unit vector which then is equal to, we just plug this in, 8 millimeters per second times 1, 25 degrees counterclockwise from positive y, and we get our regular vector back again. And so this is sort of our first way to represent a vector. We'll call this the, the uh, descriptive representation. Okay. Another way to describe this vector is with, uh, with ordered pairs ordered pairs. Since we could translate the vector wherever we wanted, we can translate it so that its uh, tail is at the origin of our coordinate system, and then we can read off the x and y coordinates of the uh, tip of the vector. And so this would be the y-coordinate 
and this would be the x coordinate. And so, so what we know from before is that this, um, oh, we didn't want to make sure we, sh we have positive x axis. Here's positive y. And so this uh, vector had a magnitude of 8 millimeters per second. And it made an angle theta here, where theta was equal to uh, 25 degrees. So to find this, the value of uh, vx and vy, we just use our trigonometry rules. We want to find the length of this line, and that will give us the y-coordinate. And so the length of that line using trigonometry is uh, hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. And this is all also in millimeters per second. And then Vx is the length of that line, which, in, which using our trigonometry rules is uh, 8 sine theta also in millimeters per second. And so the y component is along the positive y direction. The x component here is in the negative x direction. So the x component is negative. And so it's important, again, with using, when assigning whether the components are positive or negative, we always go to your graph or your schematic to be able to determine the sign of the components. And so we can calculate these uh, values. This is 7.25, and this is negative 3.38. And so our final vector v in component form is components 7.25, negative 3.38. I, we, it makes sense to call this a component form, but I, I want to use that for our other one. This is really sort of an ordered pair of components, and so we might call this the ordered pair form. But it's just the, the ordered pairs that give us the, uh, the coordinates of the tip of the vector if the tail is at the origin. And of course it has units still millimeters per second. The components can be positive or negative because they're telling you the x and y coordinates which can be positive or negative. And so it's important not to confuse your components with uh, things like the magnitude in the other description. So so here is the this vector in um, in this ordered pair form. So, the first thing we can do is, now let's say we want to calculate the magnitude. So the magnitude v, well in fact we know it's already 8 meters per second. If we were just given the components, we could calculate the magnitude by taking the square root of the squares of the components, and we would find that that's 8 millimeters per second. Note that the um, the components and the vector all have the same units. That's very important. Okay, and so here's the magnitude now is, is uh, 8 millimeters per second. Let's say we wanted to calculate the unit vector, v hat. Well, from before, we know that the unit vector is the vector divided by the magnitude, and so uh, that vector then is equal to uh, 1, 8 millimeters per second times the, this ordered pair, 7.25 minus 3.38, and then you just divide both of these numbers by 8. This also has units, millimeters per second. So the units cancel, and then I get both of these numbers divided by 8, which gives me back uh, 0 0.906 and uh, negative 
point four two three. This is now the uh, unit vector that points in the same direction as my original vector. If I were to go plot that on my my graph, I would go up to some negative point uh, nine and and positive point nine, some negative point four, and I would find that that point lies exactly along my vector. So there is my unit vector. It has a magnitude 1. It's dimensionless. This does not have any units. And it points in the direction of my original vector because it contains the direction information from that original vector. And if I were to calculate the magnitude of this sum, square root of the sums of the squares, I would again get the number 1. Uh, we can rewrite our original vector v in terms of the magnitude eight millimeters per second times the unit vector point nine oh six negative point four two three and then this would give me back uh, my original components okay so this is the uh, ordered pair sort of form representation for a vector the final uh, form of the vector that we were looking at is what we're calling component form. But really, uh, component form uses the components multiplied by the very specific unit vectors along the positive x and y axes. And these allow us a, a very simplified way to add and subtract vectors. And so in our component form, we have some vector v, which is equal to uh, the x component of the vector times um, the unit vector that points in the x direction, plus the y component times the unit vector that points in the positive y direction. So the these are real vectors. They have their unit vectors. They have magnitude 1. They point in the positive plus x and plus y uh, direction respectively, where these are the components vx and vy, which can be either positive or negative. And so we've already calculated those before, so we don't have to do it again. But if we were to write our vector in component form, our v then is equal to the x component, which is 7.25 millimeters per second i hat plus the y component, negative 3.38 millimeters per second j hat. And so if we wanted to then calculate the magnitude, we do it the same way. Square root of vx squared plus vy squared, which would uh, give us back 8 millimeters per second. And then we have our, if we wanted to find the unit vector uh, for the vector itself, v, that's going to be v divided by the magnitude, so that's equal to 1 over 8 millimeters per second times the original uh, vector, which is 7.25 i hat minus 3.38 j hat with units of millimeters per second. The millimeters per second units cancel, and I get the, both the 7.25, negative 3.38, divided by 8, and I get my final unit vector, which we've seen before, point, well, these values, 6, i hat, minus 0.423, j hat. You'll see the components of the unit vector 
are the same as the components from the unit vector we had before. It's just this is the unit vector in the ordered pair representation, and here's the unit vector in the uh, component representation. And then you can represent the, the complete vector v by the magnitude times the unit vector. And that's it for this module and this unit.